Hello all. In this video, we will start looking at the conditional gradient method, which is of particular interest in problems where projection over the constraint set is not easy or efficiently done. So we are still considering the constraint optimization problems in the last section, which is x star is equal to arg min of x in calligraphic x f of x. Here calligraphic x is closed and convex set. Likewise, we have our usual assumptions. Uh, let us try a new nomenclature just to remember these assumptions. Uh, AC is that F is convex. AL is that F is L smooth. We will additionally make one more assumption, which is that AX, which is that set X is compact. It means that maximum over XY in calligraphic X, norm of X minus Y is less than or equal to D which is a finite quantity. The last assumption is new and we have not used it so far, but it is however needed for the class of algorithms that we will describe now. We have seen the projected gradient descent method for this problem, which takes the form xt plus 1 equal to px of xt minus eta gradient f of xt. But we have only considered settings where this projection operation was easy. The ease of calculation was of course not included in the oracle complexity calculations, but that was a practical requirement. So we cannot really use the projected gradient method if the projection operation cannot be efficiently calculated at every iteration. So in this and in the next couple of videos, we will consider a projection free algorithm. The updates there would not require a projection, but would still require us to solve our sub problem at every iteration. The subproblem is however easy in certain scenarios, but we must emphasize that uh, this algorithm is not as general and will not give you a free lunch. It is only useful in a limited number of problems. Let us take a look at the conditional gradient or the Frank Wolf algorithm. It was proposed by Frank and Wolf all the way back in 1956 in the era when gradient descent was the only algorithm that was practical, since then it was mostly forgotten, probably because people were focusing on faster algorithms like Newton method or interior point methods. However, it made a resurgence in the era of big data, where it was shown to be much easier to implement for certain L1 norm and nuclear norm constraint problems. It has the updates yt equal to arg min of u in calligraphic x, inner product of f of xt, comma u and xt plus 1 equal to 1 minus eta xt plus eta times yt, where eta t is the step size. In the original paper, they suggested the use of step size eta t equal to 2 by t plus 1, but many other choices are of course possible. The algorithm is required to be initialized such that x1 is in calligraphic x, that is x1 is feasible. Then you can see that if xt lies in calligraphic x, and yt obviously lies in calligraphic x, it would imply that xt plus 1, which is a convex combination of xt and yt for eta t less than 1, also lies in calligraphic x since it is a convex set. One more thing to note here is that in general, you cannot minimize a linear objective over an arbitrary set and hope to get a bounded result. That is why we have assumed that calligraphic x is compact, otherwise the updates cannot even be written. Now compared to the gradient descent and its variants, this is a very general algorithm. In fact, we will not be able to use most of the tools from our earlier analysis here and we will actually be restricted in our analysis in this case. The Frank Wolf method is appealing in cases when calligraphic X is a polyhedron. In this case, you can see that the update equation involves solving a linear programming problem which could be simpler than the quadratic programming problem that would arise in a projected gradient descent method. We will look at some specific examples where the Frank Wolf method really shines. Before that, let us look at some alternative ways of writing down the updates of the Frank Wolf algorithm. If you remember the definition of the support of a set calligraphic X, you can see that the support of set calligraphic x evaluated at minus gradient f of x, sigma calligraphic x minus gradient f of x 
is given by max over u in calligraphic x minus of inner product gradient f of x comma u which is nothing but minus of minimum of inner product gradient f of x comma u so the frank wolf update can therefore be written in terms of the support and become xt plus 1 equal to 1 minus eta t xt minus eta t sigma calligraphic x of minus gradient f of xt so we have written down the updates using the definition of the support there is not much else to it writing it in this way is just useful for us to remember uh, but it does not make it easier to implement or analyze another way of motivating the updates is by adding some constant to the objective so that it can be written as yt equal to r min over u in calligraphic x f of xt plus inner product of gradient f of xt u minus xt so in other words we are always finding yt by minimizing the linear approximation of the function f calculated at the point xt this is in contrast to the gradient descent where we were minimizing a quadratic approximation of the function f at xt let us try to visualize the update just to understand it better i am showing this nice 3d figure which i took from this reference the objective function here is the one that is bowl shaped if we were looking at it from the top we would have seen contour lines which are elliptical in shape the constraint region d here is a polyhedral and a set of valid values x is colored greenish suppose that we are at a point x here then the y update equation involves constructing a linear approximation to the function at x the red plane visible here is exactly that it is the linear approximation of f constructed at x to find y we need to minimize this linear approximation over the set calligraphic d as you can see because the objective is a plane it will always be minimized at the boundary of the set d in fact here d is a polyhedron so y always lies at one of the corners of d so the point at which the red plane takes minimum value over d is denoted by s finally xt plus 1 is given by the convex combination of x and s so it lies somewhere in between these two points and inside the cal set calligraphic d as you can see this is a very different method from the projected gradient method there we had allowed the iterates to get out of the feasible region and then projected them back here we are never doing that but instead we are trying to find the direction in which the plane takes the minimum value and then they take a step along that direction in order to analyze the frank wolf method we need to list some properties as in the projected gradient descent the gradient does not go to zero so we are faced with the question of what to choose in its place let us denote y of x equal to r min over u in calligraphic x in our product of f of x comma u so that the updates can be written in terms of y of x as xt plus 1 equal to 1 minus eta t xt plus eta t times y of xt also define the conditional gradient divergence as the quantity s of f comma calligraphic x x equal to max of u in calligraphic x in our product of gradient f of x comma x minus u using the definition of y of x we can write this as in our product of gradient f of x x minus y of x or equivalently in our product of gradient f of x comma x minus min over u in calligraphic x in our product of gradient f of x comma u this last inequality suggests that s of x is greater than equal to 0 because the second term is always smaller let us look at conditional gradient divergence for convex functions if f is convex then we have that gradient f of x inner product with x minus u is greater than equal to f of x minus f of u this is the first order convexity condition this should hold for all u in calligraphic x therefore we can maximize both sides with respect to u over calligraphic x so as to get s of x greater than equal to f of x minus f of x star which is greater than equal to 0 so for convex functions the conditional gradient divergence is an upper bound on the optimality gap further the condition s of x star equal to 0 is equivalent to 
s of x star less than equal to 0 because it cannot be negative which is equivalent to gradient f of x star comma x star minus u less than equal to 0 for all u in calligraphic x. This is exactly the optimality condition for the problem. So to summarize, we have that conditional gradient is non-negative and is 0 only when x is the optimal x star. So this suggests that conditional gradient divergence can be used in the place of gradient norm as a metric. While the properties of the optimality gap only hold for convex functions, we will actually use this as a metric even in the non-convex case. Let us look at the sufficient decrease inequality. We have seen so far that s of x is given by inner product of gradient f of x, comma x minus y of x and is non-negative and zero only at the optimum. If we use the quadratic upper bound for the L-smooth function f, we get f of 1 minus eta x plus eta y of x less than equal to f of x plus inner product of gradient f of x eta times y of x minus x plus L by 2 eta times x minus y of x norm square. Now substitute the definition of s of x so as to get that the right hand side is less than equal to f of x minus eta s of x plus eta square times L by 2 x minus y of x norm square. We have already seen that the conditional gradient divergence is non-negative. Likewise, the last term is non-negative. So like what we had in the gradient descent and projected gradient descent, this equation does not imply non-increasing function value. So we cannot use the tools that we have seen earlier for this case because they are not applicable here. So with that, I end this video. In the next video, we will look at several examples where the application of Frank-Wolf updates results in simplification.